welcome to your home yoga practice source where we talk about all things practice. You might wonder what practice means and it's really the process of making something your own, taking it home and struggling with it and enjoying with it and then joining back into a group. And today I get to talk to Tiani Perkins known as the wild hypno lady but who is a certified hypnotherapist and women's confidence expert. Raised with strong emphasis on education, stability, and financial responsibility, Tiani excelled academically and professionally. She graduated in the top 10% of her class from a prestigious liberal arts college, as was a member of five honor societies, lived abroad in several countries and became fluent in Spanish, secured a high paying job with excellent benefits, all while maintaining a near perfect credit score. Despite her outward success, Tiani felt miserable and empty inside. She was plagued by self-doubt, insecurities, and a constant fear of both failure and success. Who can't identify with that? Her demanding lifestyle left her feeling disconnected from her loved ones and trapped in an endless pursuit of achievement. When her now husband proposed, Tiani saw an opportunity to seek deeper meaning in life. She left her secure job. Talk about courage but soon also faced severe financial difficulties. The hero meets a crisis. Within a year, her credit score plummeted. She filed for bankruptcy and she and her family were homeless, living in a car with their newborn daughter. Tiani felt hopeless, ashamed, and struggled more than ever, feeling no closer to fulfillment despite her hard work. At her breaking point, Tiani decided to invest all of her energy into discovering the secret to a truly joyful and fulfilling life. Without self-confidence, sorry, she realized that ultimate self-confidence was at the heart of true happiness. Without self-confidence and self-trust, she found it impossible to create a life of true happiness, abundance, and ease. Today, Tiani has transformed her life once again she no longer faces homelessness or hopelessness, but instead experiences immense joy and abundance. She's achieved her dream career, lives in a beautiful home with her family, and resides in a wonderful neighborhood. She wakes up excited about life and goes to sleep feeling fulfilled and at peace. As the wild hypno lady, Tiani now supports high achieving women worldwide. She helps them eliminate subconscious confidence blocks chronic self-doubt, and perfectionism. Oh, the bugaboo of perfectionism. By doing so, she enables them to achieve unshakable confidence in both their professional and personal lives, unlocking a life full, unlock, locking a life full of excitement and joy. Welcome, Tiani. Thank you so much, Christine. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. And I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you. You're so welcome. We've uh, we've been talking now for a couple of weeks, and um, I'm so impressed with your uh, your your transparency and your embrace of the of and ownership of your story. And I'm fascinated about the role that practice plays in your personal as well as your pro professional life. Have you always had some form of a spiritual practice or a physical practice? Oh, man, that's a really great question. And the answer is absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I did not have that. And, you know, probably led to a lot of those insecurities and not feeling mm. whole and, and doubting and, and not fulfillment that I was experiencing for all those years, right? Chasing like the next thing, the next achievement and feeling like I just wasn't there because I did not have a, a practice of any sorts. I didn't exercise. I wasn't, I didn't, I don't really care what I ate. It was like, it was just. You were focused. It sounds like on school. Yeah. Yeah. Academics and career, all that stuff. Right. Yes. Yeah. So no, to answer your question, I didn't, I did not, did not have that. And, and so you, you went from great outward success to love, which is a form of form of great internal success with not outward success. 
And right. you have now found a life where you have an internal success that anybody can see from the glow. Yeah, that's a great, wow, that's beautiful how you put that. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's true, right? Um, I had, it was like a seesaw. I went from here to there and then I found the balance in the in between. And what I would say catapulted that was my practice. Um, and it happened while we were in the car, actually, because I did not know how to get out of the car. Like, I was so confused. How the hell do I get out of this? I don't understand how I'm going to be here forever. I'm going to die in this car, right? I was convinced. Like, it was overwhelming. And it was a really dark time for me. And that was right around the time that The Secret came out and everybody was talking about The Secret mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I knew of the power of visualizing and trying to manifest. So I would journal and I would be in the car crying all the time. And I would journal in the car every morning, just journaling, no matter how terrible things looked. Right. And I, mm -hmm. I was just trying to make ends meet, but I kept my journal. I kept my journal. I kept my journal. And it took a while, right? It took some time because mm -hmm. I was feeling mm -hmm. really defeated, but that was the first time that I had taken time to actually recognize what it was I was looking for in life, not just mm. an achievement because my mom told me I should, or, you know, my, my teacher or professor in college said I should, but more so because of me identifying what it is I truly wanted deep down inside and what would really bring me joy as I worked on getting out of this car. What is it that I'm trying to unlock? Mm -hmm. And so that was the beginning, I would say, of my practice was just learning to connect with myself and with my true desires and exploring that. So it started off pretty small. Journaling is simple, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of us don't do it. At least I didn't. And so that developed once, once I journaled, I unlocked exactly how I was going to get out of the car. And then I did it and I got out of the car and we were now living in a three bedroom house because I figured out, I was like, oh my gosh, you're really good at connecting with people. Just talk to people and ask them if they have a house that you can rent, even though you don't have a down payment to put down yet, see what you can do. And I worked my little charismatic charm and I did. And I got a three bedroom house and out of thin air, didn't have to put any money down. My credit score didn't matter because I didn't even check. So like I unlocked my magic just from really consistently doing this. Yeah, go ahead. So you your relationship something? to yourself led to being able to form a relationship with somebody who, who, vibed with your self-trust and said, yes, yes, I, I will help with that. Precisely, precisely. And so once we were in the house, I was obviously able to expand my practice in terms of getting more into movement. Now it's not the same house we're in now. Now we're in a different house in a different state. And, um, you know, we're always going wherever our hearts lead us now, because we have the confidence and self-trust that it's going to just work out now because we know kind of tapped into that now but um but now what I do is I my my practice isn't strictly body movement isn't it it isn't strictly meditation it isn't strictly hypnotherapy it's like all of the above I bring them all into my day-to-days and you know some days I'll be stretching that's my yoga is stretching when I can't go to the yoga studio I just stretch and just let my body feel what it needs to feel um, and I would say that's been the, that was the, that was a big game, game changer for me. When I started body movement was a very big difference for me because now I also am attuned to how my body is, is feeling. And so instead of running myself into the ground, like I used to, <laughs> when I would try to be in my business or my, in my career and advancing in that regard, instead of running myself crazy and ragged. I actually can listen to myself and feel, oh, okay, it's time to slow down. It's time to contract. It's time to expand, you know, whatever it is. And and so that's helped me to build this business that I've been doing as a hypnotherapist now in such a sustainable and way more aligned way than I was moving before. That's that's such a beautiful and succinct way of of talking about the benefits of carving out that time. So one of the things that I hear in your, in, in how you're talking about that, those practices is that it, 
you were, you use that time to do anything that will connect you to your true self. Absolutely. That's it. Yep. It is that. And so I'm, I'm always fascinated by how it always comes back to relationship and true self because yes. The, the goal of yoga is for us, I, I call it coinciding with yourself, right? Because we all, we all wear masks and have roles and there's nothing wrong with masks right, and roles. Right. They're necessary. Um, you, you are a part of yourself when you're dealing with an urgent thing. You're a part of yourself, right? And you can bring the whole self with it but you're you're focused on a certain set of skills and right. sharing certain parts and there's a time in it sounds like your day these days where you connect and try to expand into the whole self and really feel it absolutely that is such a you're really good at that conveying what I'm saying in such a beautiful way. Like, absolutely though. That is for exactly just the way you're saying it. It's like, man, yeah, that's, that's what it is. And I appreciate that because that is, you know, what I'm hoping to achieve when I'm taking time to realign and listen and, and connect with self and connect with source. Right. Absolutely. However, a person thinks of that yeah. and Okay, so you said something I think is really interesting there. That's at least what I'm attempting to do. So I think one of the, one of the obstacles, so yoga also talks about um, there being obstacles to our healing wholeness and, and that connection. And one of those obstacles, kleshas, is self-doubt. And that often creeps in when we we try to do something and it just doesn't land that day right 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 and i think often then so oh i tried journaling once right i hear this a lot i tried journaling once it worked for a few days and then i sat down and i didn't get anything out of it so i didn't so i stopped how have you how have you been able to continue even through those periods where maybe what seemed magic the day before didn't feel totally magic the next day? Yeah, yeah, that's a really great question. Um, typically what I've, I've, I've done that before, first of all, I, I'm completely guilty of that in so many times in my life, right? But what I've learned since starting hypnotherapy and since starting just general self-kindness um, is, mm -hmm. I guess, the best way to put it. Um, mm -hmm. I have learned that I don't need to attach an outcome to my self-care. And I think that comes from the high achieving woman, right? That is everything we do is very intentional because I'm trying to achieve something. And so if not, if something doesn't net on the other side of that, it feels like it's a waste of our time and it's frustrating and it's, it's disappointing and, and we just forget it. I'm not doing this no more. Right. And so I've learned that self-care, the achievement may not be, you may not notice it like directly right now, but First of all, if you stop doing it, you'll notice real fast how incredible it actually is and keeping you down here and, and keeping you sane, right? But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would say that separating that, I'm not achieve, I'm not trying to achieve something. I don't need to feel some crazy something on the back end of me taking time to myself, on the back end of eating right for myself or exercising or going in nature. I don't need to achieve anything on the back end. Like anything tangible. It is achieving something, but even if you can't see it, just doing it because you know that this is really important for you, for your growth and for all of those around you, everybody you're touching, you're bringing clean energy around to them and helping them to step into who they should be or who they want to be. Right. So I think just separating the achievement aspect from the self-care aspect. I am so... <clears throat> there are two concepts in there that just fascinate me because 
self-care has gotten co-opted by a lot of different industries, right? And from what you, what you have shared with me, your practices, you, you're eclectic. You do what connects you that morning, right? Some mornings I'm like you, right. I, need, I need to work it out. And other mornings yeah. I just need to sit. And I am, I am an avid journaler, like all of these things. And you can't do all of, that's the other thing. At some point I, I was yeah. like, okay, your morning routine can't, can't be three hours. Everything. <laughs> right, right. So you do what, what fits for that day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's free. Yes. That ability to move and listen to yourself. That that's, that's a kind of self care. And don't get me wrong. I like a massage. I love a massage. I like a good mani pedi that, but these are the things that sort of are the, are top of mind for self-care or even coming to a yoga class and please right, come right. to the yoga class and also right practice at home. And Absolutely. this concept of goal oriented, having, having a sense that connecting to yourself and even reaching out, right? We do this with other people. Like if I reach out to a friend and it doesn't result in us maybe even talking or having a a great time, right? It wasn't the best time ever. Right, right. Or whatever. I don't don't think that that was useless. I reached out. That person now knows that I thought about them, right? Exactly, exactly. And it's the same thing with ourselves. And so- I, one of the things that I've always been fascinated with is as a, as a, a professional um, hypnotist, is that, is that yeah. the right word? I'm sorry. I'm struggling yeah, with I'm, this. I'm certified in both. So yeah, hypnotist, yes. hypnotherapist. Yeah. Hypnotherapist. That's it. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. yeah. Um, as a certified hypnotherapist, it, while you were learning that, were there practices that you, un, that you undertook every morning for a period of time or every day? Um, to be completely honest, no. Uh, hypnosis was probably the, the number one thing that I was doing, but I didn't do it even on a daily basis. And I'm only sharing that transparency for everybody to know that like, if you're, if you don't do it every day, you don't have to give up on it completely. Okay. (laughs) You know, it doesn't have to be zero or a hundred, right? You can, you can take your time. So yeah, there would be days where I would listen to my hypnosis audios and really try to integrate everything at the subconscious level and beliefs and, and kind of try to rewire those negative or contradicting beliefs about myself. Um, Mm -hmm. But if I didn't, I just kept, I just got back at it again, or I would, you know, if I really needed some help, um, getting untangled somewhere, I would schedule a session, a hypnotherapy session and make sure that I go ahead and invest my time and energy and money even to making sure that I get my hypnotherapy sessions in. Because for me, that was so high in the priorities, seeing how, how imbalanced my life had become prior to actually, you know, implementing a daily routine or practice of sorts. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it sounds to me like you're the one of one way of describing what hypnotherapy has helped you and helped you to help other people find is to know themselves better, that it helped you know who you were better. And you are interested in helping other people, not telling them who they are, but helping them find that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're all born that way, right? We're all born and I, I, I'm upset because I have to get out of here, but um, we're, we're all born with 
complete confidence. You know, baby does not come thinking its thighs are too big. It's got these rolls and all that stuff. No matter how much they can poop on themselves, they are still happy as crap, right? That is how we are. Like, that's how we're born. We're born with that unshakable confidence. They get up, they want to walk. They just decide, I'm going to walk today. And then they just decide it. And they take those steps, no matter how many times they fall, they don't question themselves or think they're stupid or they can't do it. That That's just ridiculous. That's not how we were born. And so what I do in my practice and as a practice myself is help people return back to that. That is our natural blueprint. And all the stuff we've got, all these self-doubts and insecurities and, and questioning of ourself only came as like subconscious protectors, right? To protect us from different things in life. And that's great and all, but we don't need them anymore, right? That was for when we were young. We didn't know how to navigate the world. Now we're we're more empowered. We, we're intelligent. We have so many different tools on our side. So now we can let go of that and go back to that original blueprint that we were created as. And that's what I do at the subconscious level. That's remarkable. Um, self-knowledge is really, um, the goal of all human life, in my opinion. Um, so I, I'm excited to be hosting your upcoming workshop at the studio. That's June 1st of 2024. If you're, if you're watching this later, you can still connect with Tiani, uh, by applying for a free ultimate confidence breakthrough call. And the, the URL will be below this video. Absolutely. Tiani Perkins, Wild Hypno Lady. Um, I am honored to, to uh, be a colleague of yours and to be hosting you at the, the studio here in Albuquerque. Um, and I look forward to more conversations about practice and self-knowledge. Oh, Christine, thank you so much. I'm so thrilled. Oh my gosh. We're going to help so many women just mm. bringing awareness to what's possible for them. And the workshop's going to be super fun. So I'm very stoked. And, and I'm excited and for the magic about, we're about to make. Me too. Me too. Uh, we've talked a lot about hypnotherapy. Maybe that, maybe we should just very quickly drop in. In the workshop, there won't be hypnotherapy. But there will oh, be yeah. skills and actionable things that you, you, the viewer can do to, to bust through your self-doubt. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you All so right. much, Christine. I look forward to chatting with you again and hello and, and welcome mm -hmm. to everybody. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> Have an awesome rest of the weekend and happy, happy yoga union day. Thank you very much. <laughs> Take care.